Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever. Now, as you know, I recently moved here to Montana, and one of the difficulties of that is my house is completely sparse. I have been on an air mattress for the last month here at home, and uh, I've been thinking I want to try and do something pretty cool for a bed. I want to build a bed, and I want this thing to look industrial looking and heavy and super heavy duty and awesome. And we are, of course, joined by Jason from Fireball Tools, seriously experienced metal worker, steel worker, millwright. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a hell of a cool bed frame and it is all the better that Casper is sponsoring today's episode. They design and make some incredible mattresses and other bedding supplies to allow you to invest in your sleep and you can get $50 towards select mattresses when you go to casper.com forward slash forge and use code forge, F-O-R-G-E at checkout. Thank you Casper for sponsoring this episode. Let's jump back in. This is the material that we were gonna be using for this bed frame. This thing's gonna end up weighing like 500 pounds, but it's gonna be awesome. We have already spent some time discussing and collaborating on the design. This is gonna be a hell of a thing. It's gonna be a serious bed frame. <laughs> so, we need to start coming up with, I guess, a cut list. Yep. Probably the first thing. Yep. And then start trying to work out how we're gonna cut this W beam. Let's get to it. So the way that we're constructing this, we are going to have one W beam coming across like this, and we're going to do what's called a knife plate. A tab of steel that gets welded onto one beam like that, going to have two holes in it. Then a female W beam is made where we cut off the top flange of the beam there. It has holes in it, it bolts onto here so that you can have one beam going this way and one beam coming that way. This is very much a, like a common connection in yep. industry and how they put up buildings, right? This is exactly the way we do it every day. It's a very mechanical looking connection, which I think is what you're after. So here is the drawing. This is what we need to make. We need four of these knife plates. Time to get cutting. I didn't read the drawing properly, so my bad. I'm gonna cut some more steel for us to drill some more holes. Jason's getting ready to cut these beams. Woo, there we go. Right, so we have our W beam, wide beam, is what they what they call it, yep. cut to length. We finally have four correctly cut and drilled pieces. The next step is gonna be welding on the knife plates to these beams. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about, what's it called? Spray transfer. Spray transfer MIG welding. Right, I prefer, my gas of choice is a tri-mix gas and it basically adds oxygen. So you have argon, CO2, and oxygen. And what that does is allows the wire almost to come out of the gun like a, your spray painting, which you gets a little higher deposition rate and more penetration. So, and the bead just wets out real nice and you get a really nice pretty bead. So I brought a little bottle with me today just so these guys can experience it and have fun. And it really does help on thicker material like this to get a good penetration. And what's crazy is, is he was showing us a little bit earlier, we'll do a little demo now, yep. but you had the welder cranked up on every single dial. Wire feed max, power max, and you just lay it down, it doesn't even burn through the stuff, no. you just lay it down. Yeah, so you can, with this gas it's pretty versatile, you can weld up to a half inch thick or all the way down to like 3 16 so it just to, right now I have the wire speed cranked way up just to, to weld quickly, but uh, you can play with it as it's really flexible. So, it's amazing, yeah. so it's cool. I wanna see some of this spray transfer again. Okay, let's do it. That's some two inch tube, 120 wall. That's a 50 mil tube, about three millimeters wall thickness. Probably need to get down to, let's try somewhere in there first. 
So that was globbing. That was, you can still hear it short arcing. I need to turn the wire speed down just a little bit more. See what we can get. Let's see if I got it close on this one. There you go. Whoa, that's quiet. That is not sizzling bacon like I'm used to hearing. Yep, that's spray arc. And that was a quick weld as well. Super hot. That is beautiful, flat. Doesn't look like there's any undercut. Let it wet out and you just point and shoot. The adjuster travel speed accordingly. That is amazing. Should we weld these knife plates on? What are we waiting for? Let's do it. Let's do it. Go ahead, left. So after we grab some steel, we also need to grab some, uh, some bolts for this, some half inch bolts. So it's time to run some errands. Golly, that is some heavy beam. So this here is the flange, this is the web. You're essentially gonna remove the flange from the top, yep. from the bottom, and that's gonna leave you with just a tongue sticking out like that. We gotta do, that's the next step, and then we'll drill holes in there, and then it'll bolt up to our knife plates and bolt it together, and off we go. Here we go, five, eight. Has now flapped this thing up these ends, and Jason is gonna try uh, messing with the torch, getting the settings right, because he wants to show cutting the beam with the oxypropane torch. Awesome does that look? A little dry assembly. We still gotta drill lots of holes and get that all bolted. But the scale of this is enormous. I've got a king size Casper mattress that we gotta put in there. I mean, this is like the size of my bedroom. It's huge. So this gives a pretty good idea of what this is gonna look like from here. We have spent a good deal of time having to think about all this. It's level, it's about two inches higher than it's gonna be off the ground. What just first comes to mind is this thing is enormous. Like, I mean, this is an absurd size, um, which, which is kinda cool, you know, it's a really imposing piece. And these W beams look awesome. The connections with the knife plates, Really cool idea. It just makes you look super industrial. Absolutely love it. And we have been thinking about how it is that we're gonna be doing the feet on this. And one of the things that I want with the design of this piece is to really be able to play on, on your mind as you look at it for the first time and make it look like it's somehow suspended in air. Make it look like it's coming out of the wall. If we try and make the support of it a little subtle, I think it's gonna make it an even cooler piece. So the idea that we have is to have this be almost a tripod design, not quite a tripod, but we're gonna have two feet in the back made out of this same W beam. We're gonna stand it off the wall enough so that we can get past the skirting board or the trim. And then here, we're gonna be using some channel section. I'm gonna build off of there to then make a foot that'll hopefully end up being nice and stable for this. This thing is gonna be heavy, but since it's in pieces and it all bolts together, it's gonna be just fine, I think, just fine. I'm gonna cut this, Jason is gonna cut that. That's a foot, this is kind of a foot. better than I thought. Holy smokes. I would have normally never attempted to cut this in this saw, but it's the end of the day and I want to do an experiment and it did a fantastic job.
We've got a little bit of a problem. I, uh, I went ahead and messed up the design of this thing. We'll show that. There is just way too much flex in this frame like this. This is just hilarious. So we're gonna have to uh, cut off some stuff and uh, start again on a more structurally sound foot idea. We still wanna make it so that it doesn't look like it's supported when you just kinda look at it as you're walking around. Um, but I think we're gonna be able to sort this out with a little more work, a little bit more thinking. Um, this'll just be just a small little, uh, small little road bump in the journey to having this bed frame finished. Okay, after some time, we've worked out how it is that we think we're gonna fix this. It's gonna go something like this. Here on our side beams, we're gonna be welding this piece of inch and a half tube to work as a spacer. In here is going to be a hole drilled. That's going to be there. There's going to be another one over there. This is a piece of two by two square tubing that's going to span across that entire length and be bolted in. We're going to weld to that tubing some supports that are going to go onto another piece of channel to be some feet. And hopefully this is going to get the flex out of it. So fingers crossed, we're on our way to a much better bed frame. Um, we're going to keep cracking on. I'm going to weld these on. Jason is drilling some holes for some tabs right over there. It's upside down. The whole frame, I was starting to weld on the spaces upside down. I welded it upside down. It's ah! all right, I'm gonna grind it and heat it up with a torch. Okay, we got our center supports in. Will is oxidizing up the areas where I welded on. The spaces on the wrong side. We did something really smart that Jason suggested for welding these on. We bolted on our tabs all the way across, clamped on the tubes, and only then welded it so we didn't have to worry about welding it and then getting the holes in the perfect place. One of the amazing things that I've been learning about fabricating from Jason is that you want to build in the allowance for human error so that then you can adjust it and then have things end up accurate. Super fun. Jason's about to weld from underneath to weld on our spaces, this is gonna be pretty cool to see. Look at that, that looks so much better. That is so much more solid. This bad boy is about ready. We just have the wire wheeling to do. Will is working on that already. And then I think we're gonna be ready to put on the mattress. The bed frame is done, and holy moly, does it look amazing. I mean, this is cool. This is everything I was hoping for in the bed frame that I was gonna make. It looks industrial. This thing looks ridiculously overbuilt. Looks like it's just coming off the ground without feet at the front. It looks awesome, and I'm extremely, extremely pleased. It wouldn't have been possible without Jason and Will's help. I mean, this thing just looks awesome, but it is not much of a bed without the mattress, which is why it's really, really good that Casper is sponsoring today's episode because they make a hell of a good quality mattress. Back in July, I think it was, I read a book about sleeping called Why We Sleep, and it blew my mind just how important sleep was. It's where we spend a third of our life, and since then I've been so careful to try and get good sleep, get to sleep early and get a good full eight hours sleep, and it has been phenomenal for me. I have more energy, I feel better, and a good mattress is so important to getting that good night's sleep, which is just why the Casper mattress is so good, because it's made out of several layers of different foams and memory foams. I mean, this thing is overbuilt and over-engineered, just like this bed frame is. So without further ado, let's throw this Casper mattress on. So here is the mattress. That's all a king-size mattress arrives in. That's a small box. It's time to put it on the bed.
It's the morning. I just had my first night of sleep on the Casper mattress. It was extraordinarily comfortable. I love investing in a good night of sleep. It means I'm going to be sorted for the day. Just a couple of things again on the Casper mattress. It's just so convenient. Comes in that little tiny box, which is just insane. And it was it was uh, pretty cool to have that inflate up. Another great thing about Casper, they don't just do mattresses. They do the sheets and the duvets too, which are very, very nice. And the very, very best thing is you have a 100 night risk free trial. If you don't like it before 100 nights, you can just return the mattress. You can get your money back. That's amazing. Be sure to get $50 off select mattresses at casper.com forward slash forge. And don't forget to use that code forge at checkout. F O R G E. Terms and conditions apply. Get yourself a good mattress. Invest in some good sleep for a good day tomorrow. Thank you, Casper, for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for being here. Huge shout out to Jason from Fireball Tools and his phenomenal help this week. Jason, Thank you so much for your help. Please be sure to subscribe to his channel, Fireball Tools. He's got some great videos. He's gonna have a hell of a good lineup of content coming out over the next little while. So make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date with him. Thank you, Jason. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye-bye.